Hello everyone, welcome to a video about the mob vote for Minecraft Live 2022. This is not an informational video about the mob vote. If you want information about the mob vote, go and watch the mob vote videos. Instead, this video will do one thing and one thing only, convince you that the tough golem is the mob to vote for in the mob vote. It is the superior mob, the ultimate mob, the best mob for this mob vote. And today I'm gonna show you why. First of all, point number one, just look at this adorable tough golem. My goodness, my goodness. Just looks fantastic. You can easily see this fitting into any sort of castle build or pyramid or temple build. Even the default vanilla temples and pyramids. I think this would be right at home in those areas. And yeah, they would definitely make a nice addition. Add a little bit of livelihood as they do walk around. Also, I just wanted to give you this glorious moment from the mob vote video. It's alive! Horse! 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 That's right. Living art in Minecraft. It is here. It is awesome. And Jeb approves. Jeb approves, guys. Do you need anything else? I don't think you do. But in case you do, let's now discuss how the mob will work. Why it is superior in every way to the other mobs in the mob vote. And... Let's discuss some potential crafting and how the mob might be created. So one interesting thing about the tough golem, unlike the other mobs, is that the player can actually craft it. We're assuming that it's implemented the way the other golems are. The player can craft it. So let's talk about the crafting of the tough golem. So first of all, it's probably going to be something like this as this is how the iron golem is crafted with iron blocks instead of tough blocks. So this is one potential possibility for the tough golem being crafted. Uh, then maybe for the cloak, you would add, you know, a, some type of wool block, like a red wool block for a red cloak, cyan for a cyan cloak, etc. And yeah, the golems can actually have 16 different types of cloaks. Uh, so if you basically consider that the golems can have any type of cloak, this means that any type of build you make the golems will fit it because you can put any color for the cloak, which is kind of awesome and something that the other mobs do not have. Uh, another possibility is it could be like the snow golem. So it could be something like this. Maybe the cloak in this case is like on the front or maybe like on the sides like this. Maybe this could be the primary color and the secondary color, for instance, or maybe it could be on the back too, right? So something like that. Uh, or if it's just a one block tall mob, maybe it's just simply one piece of tough, one carved pumpkin. And then like a wool on the front or the back, uh, depending on yeah which is decided upon. But something like this, I imagine one of these three will probably be how you craft the golem. Now, once the golem is into existence, of course, it looks like this. So absolutely adorable. Um, how I imagine it working is as follows. So let's hypothetically say that we craft up a tough golem. So I'm going to put down and assume that the recipe will be something like this. So we have tough, we have a uh, wool color of choice for the cloak. I'm going to go with orange and then we put the carved pumpkin down and boom, tough golem is created in this one wide, uh, one by one uh, square right here. So how I imagine this working is that these blocks go away and we're just going to use the tough block now to represent the golem. But the tough golem then stands there like a statue, right? So it's a tough golem statue. It has an orange cloak. But then whenever an item nearby is dropped, let's say like this crafting table is dropped, the tough golem then springs to life and starts to walk over like this, right? And once it gets here, it picks up the item. So the golem has now picked up the item and then goes back with the item, of course, back to where it was previously. And then stands there and displays, displays, there we go, set item, just like that. So at this point, the gauntlet would stand there and would basically have an item, but it would display it like freestanding, almost as if it's on sort of like a pedestal. Um, so imagine like a pedestal like this cake size, but covered in orange wool. And then the item is sort of like hovering on the cake. That's sort of what I'm imagining it as. Uh, it'd be sort of like this. If I do slash trigger uh, if invisible, 
There we go. Since we have a data pack here on Hermitcraft, we can display this uh, invisibly. And you can see it's just sort of standing there. So imagine having this in vanilla without the need to use commands. That is pretty awesome. And of course, the golem would look much more adorable than this Acacia Slab and Tough Block. Uh, but that gives you sort of a sense of what it would look like. And it would just stay there until you took the item back and there was another item that was loose on the floor. Now, how can this be useful? So let me just quickly get this stuff back. How can this be useful? So, let's say I have my armor, right? I'm coming back from a long, long mining trip. I'm tired. I'm exhausted. And I want to swap out my, my good armor for my bad armor because I, wanna, I don't want to lose my good armor just, you know, wandering around the, the world. So, I come in and let's say instead of just one golem, I had four golems. Let's say I had a golem here, golem here, golem here, and golem here, right? So there's my four golems. I come home from a long day of battling these drown, right? What am I going to do here? How am I going to take off my armor and what's it going to look like? Well, I'm just going to come in here and instead of like going and placing it on an armor stand, like over there, what have you, I'm not going to do any of that because I got some tough golems around my base. So instead... I'm just going to throw my armor on the ground. Boom, 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 boom. And at that point, the tough golems around here, having no items, see that, and they come to life. So suddenly, the golems start to move, right? So they all start to converge on the armor that I've thrown on the ground for them to pick up. So all these golems are now starting to move in, like so. And then they continue to move in and move in. And move in. And move in. And you get the idea here. So they're, they're moving in until eventually they all get here. Right? So let's have these two come in here like this. And once here, again, they pick up the armor. So they all pick up the armor. And then they head back to their respective spots. So what I end up with is effectively like mini guards that can display my stuff. And it eventually ends up in a situation where we have some mobs uh, that can display our armor and do it in a really cool way around our base. So we have all of our armor distributed by the tough golems throughout our base automatically, and we are now free of our armor to go pick up new armor uh, wherever that may be. Perhaps we have another set of golems like in here or something, right? Maybe we have more golems in here with different sets of armor, so we can swap them out easily. So that is one potential use of the, the tough golems. So with that in mind, what else can we do with these tough golems? Well, it turns out that they actually come with a built-in minigame. And let me set that up, and I will show you what I mean by that. So here's our hypothetical minigame. Just one example of how you can use tough golems for entertainment and uh, more enjoyment than the other mobs. So let's say we spawn in a bunch of tough golems here, right? So that's what I'm sort of simulating like this. So we just put down a bunch of tough golems around the area here. We got like a whole army of tough golems. And then uh, let's say they spawn in. So we're just going to get rid of their car pumpkin heads. So they're all just sort of standing here waiting for some items to fall on the ground. And we have up here a dropper, which I'm going to fill with a couple of different items. So here we have a few different items going in. And yeah, this will basically form the basis of our game. So our game is going to be retrieve the diamond. And you have to do that before the tough golems uh, all freeze. So the way we can do that is we basically have some pistons here that are going to yeah, extend some blocks, and, you know, this might be like a double piston extender right here, right? So this might be, you know, a little bit higher up, just so we have things blocked off and so that the tough columns don't immediately go after the item. But then you have a button on this dropper, and you start dropping items down into the hole here. Of course, that sand didn't cooperate, nor did the iron, but you get the point. So we drop all these down into the hole here like this. You could actually even throw them manually like this. And then once you have the items you want in there, you basically then remove the blocks, right? Undo this, 
And now the items are on the ground and the tough golems can see them. So they say to themselves, they think to themselves, hey, I can pick those up. And they all start to move in and swarm in toward the center, right? To pick up these items. And so the goal of the player is once the pistons come down and the tough golems all come to life simultaneously, you have to go and retrieve the diamond before the golem uh, freezes and before the golem, you know, gets back to its original spot. And that is the mini game. Uh, and it's also worth noting that because the golems move back to the same spot every time, uh, this could also be used for redstone contraptions, right? So, like, let's say the pathway of a tough golem, uh, if I dropped an item, let's say, here, right? If I drop this item here, let's say the path is like this. So it comes here, goes this way, and then comes over here to this point, right? Because this pathway is then the same every time, you could potentially um, put in a pressure plate like this. Da, 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 here, yep. Potentially put a pressure plate like this somewhere along the pathway. And then you could use that to trigger something else to happen somewhere else. Right? Like, let's say it powers, I don't know, like a door or something, right? So, in that way, you could potentially have the tough golems trigger redstone when they get the item. So, like, you could have them come out. Let's say, let's say they, uh, this is, like, behind a wall, right? So, here's my, here's my wall of target blocks, I guess. Um, and if I were to drop an item on this side of the wall, let's say right? Drop an item over here. The tough golem sees that and then takes the same path each time to the item. So he comes over here, comes over here, and when he steps on this, he reveals like a hidden door. So in that way, you could use tough golems for some useful redstone stuff, assuming that they take a similar path to the item each time, and you also have to throw it on the same block or in the same area each time. But the fact is they could be used for some redstone stuff if you are clever with it. So those are some interesting uses for the tough golems. And now I want to talk a little bit more about the customization of the tough golems. Let's return once more briefly to the colors of the cloaks of the tough golems that will give them different appearances based on the color of wool used to make the golem. And there are 16 colors in Minecraft in total, right? So there's red, blue, orange, green, magenta, cyan, pink, yellow, etc., etc., black, gray, light gray, da, 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 all the way down the line. There's 16 of them, but those 16 colors are actually huge. They allow you to match the tough golem with any color scheme you're using in your build, so the golem matches the build automatically. But there are also 1,050 different items obtainable in Survival Minecraft as of Minecraft 119. So if you multiply those two, that means there is a total of, get this, 16,800 different Tough Golem configurations already in the game. And I say already in the game because certainly Minecraft 1.20 will add new blocks and items, and the Tough Golem will also handle those as well as any future updates and items. So the Golem not only has 16,800 different combinations you can create with it now, but it will have even more in the future. Something that some of the other mobs, the Sniffer and the Rascal, for instance, do not have and cannot boast. More than likely, those mobs will get maybe an item or two, like a new plant, maybe one or two new plants, let's say, or maybe a handful of items that the Rascal gives out. And then they're unlikely to get updated beyond that. But the Tough Golem will always be able to hold items. And any new items added, it'll be able to hold those too. So the Tough Golem is more future-proof than any other mob in the mob vote. Lastly, and probably the most important thing to consider, is how much you'll interact with each of the proposed mobs. I've showed here that the Tough Golem is definitely going to be something that the player interacts with in their base, on a frequent basis, because, you know, you can swap things out. You know, if you don't like the way that looks, go with this. If you don't like the way this looks, go with this. And, yeah, it helps to, yeah, be able to interact with the golem consistently. And also, it has some functionality moving around 
as I showed before. So that's really awesome. But the other mobs don't have that. So, for instance, the Sniffer mob. So the Sniffer, as described in the mob vote, is going to be somewhat similar to the Turtle, for instance. Except instead of sand, it's going to be digging in the ground, probably on grass, like this, but with mud particles for some seeds. Now, once you get the seeds from the Sniffer, that's going to give you the plants, and you can go and plant the seeds, which will eventually grow into a plant like, let's say, this. Uh, as this looks similar to what the sniffer has on its back, or it might be something like like this, maybe, uh, perhaps. But regardless, once you get the plant, you don't really need the sniffer, because the sniffer, like the turtles, are pretty slow, and they don't really do much besides dig for seeds. Uh, just like the turtles don't really do much except, you know, lay eggs... Uh, and yeah, dig a spot for their eggs. So yeah, I don't really think the sniffer is going to be interacted with much besides getting the plant because there's not really much else to the sniffer besides the plant. <laughs> so that's the sniffer. And then the rascal, the rascal is going to be down below Y zero in the caves and the mine shafts. And It'll basically play hide-and-seek with you and then give you prizes. What type of prizes? Uh, well, the prizes are not yet determined, and they're going to be based on player feedback. But if I had to guess, I would guess something like torches, because there is no longer coal below Y0. Torches are very valuable, so that's something the Rascal could definitely give. In the video, it showed iron tools, so like iron pickaxe, iron shovel. Maybe they could give you food. Maybe they could give you flowers. But I'm guessing that's probably going to be the extent of it. Maybe there could also be like some wood, like some logs or something like that would be somewhat useful. Uh, so something like uh, these here, except we want the log variety. There we go. So something like this might be useful and might be what the uh, what the the, the, ra the rascal could give you. But uh, in general, you're already going to be mining, so you don't really need tools and you don't need shovels. You probably also have torches with you already, <laughs> so I guess it's somewhat useful to have more, but you already would likely have some if you're, uh, yeah, venturing down below Y0, or you'd have night vision like I have right now. In other words, it's tough to imagine a scenario where the rascal doesn't become just a, basically a wandering trader 2.0 scenario, where sometimes in some very niche scenarios it can be useful, but by and large players mostly ignore it after the first couple of interactions with it. So as you can see, Tough Golem is the superior choice for the mob vote 2022, and that is why I will be voting for the Tough Golem, and you should too. If you're still on the fence, though, consider this. Vote with the dog. Vote Tough Golem. Oh, 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 oh.